So here we have uh, an active op-amp regulator where I have added a pass transistor, uh, which I've labeled as Q1. And notice that I have added it in series with the load. Uh, and so basically, instead of being the op-amp output now providing the load current, the load current is coming from the unregulated power supply through the pass transistor to the load. And the only thing that the op-amp is providing current for is the base of that, uh, that transistor. Uh, some things to note about the circuit, as just like before, we have our Zener diode, and so we have our Zener voltage. Uh, the RZ resistor is basically providing the bias for that Zener voltage. The Zener voltage is going to need a minimum amount of current in order to go into its Zener region. Uh, so RZ is going to be uh, selected so that uh, so that the current flowing through it is equal to IC. So uh, Zener diode and resistor. Basically, we will need for RZ to be equal to VC divided by IZ. And we can get the values from VC and IC out of the Zener datasheet. Uh, the output of my circuit, you will notice that uh, since I still have the same configuration of a non-inverting non amplifier where the input to the amplifier is the Zener voltage, uh, my output is still going to be equal to my VL, voltage across the load, is still going to be equal to uh, the gain of the amplifier times the Zener voltage. And so my output voltage, VL is still equal to 1 plus RF over RI times V Zener. And by uh, making RF a potentiometer, I'm making the output voltage programmable. Note that uh, my VL min is equal to the Zener voltage. Uh, another thing to keep in mind in terms of the op-amp and the op-amp characteristics is that first we need for the op-amp uh, is going to be, as we can see, power from that unregulated power supply. Uh, I'm going to call the unregulated voltage VU. I'm going to label it in the figure here. This is VU. And so op-amp, uh, the voltage rails, V uh, supply, max must be less than or in the limit I suppose equal to my unregulated power power voltage or my unregulated power supply voltage. So that's one constraint. Uh, typically I will need for that supply to be also a couple of volts higher than my maximum output voltage. Uh, but also uh, notice that the op-amp has to provide the output current for that uh, pass transistor and so I'm going to say that my I out max needs to be greater than or equal to uh, IB. IB, of course, being the base current that's needed for my transistor. Now let's take a look at the requirements for the pass transistor. In this case, it's an NPN transistor. And uh, we know that, first of all, uh, IV is going to be equal to, or rather, typically write it the opposite way, IC is equal to beta times IV. Notice that this transistor is going to typically have to handle a lot of current, so it, it's not going to be a small signal transistor, but rather a power transistor. And uh, in the case of power transistors, the values of beta tend to be lower than, uh, the, than it is the case for small signal transistors. And so it just so happens that my base current is going to be equal to um, IC divided by beta. And so based on my base current being having to be um, less than or equal to my maximum output current for the op-amp, it turns out that my beta, which is equal to IC over IB, uh, needs to be greater than or equal to 
my IC, which I'm going to approximate as my load current, even though there is some current also flowing through RF and RI, but roughly needs to be greater than my load current divided by uh, my base current, which is going to be my I out max or my op amp. Another important consideration for the transistor is that it is going to be dissipating a lot of power and so we need to make sure that we are uh, not exceeding the maximum power ratings for the transistor. And so uh, the power for transistor Q1 is going to be equal to um, roughly VCE times the load current. Again, we are ignoring or neglecting the current that's flowing through RF and RI, but we could calculate that if we wanted to, but this is roughly what the power dissipation for the transistor is going to be equal to. I'll just make that an approximately equal. Um, and uh, VCE is going to be equal to the difference between the unregulated voltage and the output voltage, VL, times IL. Now, one figure of merit for the overall circuit is going to be the power efficiency. And the power efficiency of a regulator, uh, it's basically defined as the ratio of the output current to the input current. So P out to P in times 100%. Uh, the power, and when I say P out, I'm going to relabel it as PL because I've labeled my voltage across the load as uh, VL. So basically it's the power delivered to the load uh, to the input power. The power delivered to the load obviously is going to be the product of the load voltage times the load current. And uh, the input power is going to be roughly equal to um, the unregulated voltage times the load current. And again, we are neglecting a few currents, like the current going through the zener and the current going through those uh, feedback and input resistances. But it, it tends to be a lot lower for a, for a voltage regulator application in a power supply. Those currents tend to be orders of magnitude lower than the load current. And so uh, basically we could, if we use these approximations, we could approximate our power efficiency uh, since my ILs will cancel when I take the ratios is approximately equal to the load voltage divided by the unregulated voltage times 100%. And this is why uh, low dropout regulators um, are going to have better power efficiency is because essentially uh, the difference between the unregulated voltage and the regulated load voltage is going to be smaller. And so this ratio is going to be closer to one. And so this is it um, as a brief overview to uh, linear, active linear regulators. Thank you.